So you may recall at the end of part one, I put the yeast in two barrels. Well, here's a separation after a considerable amount of time. I put a light behind it so you can see. So I now have to separate the, cli the clearer liquid from the sediment. Now the clearer liquid is by no means ready for distillation yet. I have to basically go through a, a little bit of separation uh, to make it ready. But the simple way is to obviously siphon off the clearer liquid and to leave the sediment behind and then I can try and get the liquid out of the sediment. How do I do it? Well, I don't know. I was, I was thinking the best way of doing it was to put a cheesecloth bag in a, a bucket, separate it. And uh, my intentions here is to pour uh, all of the, uh, or siphon all of the liquid out of here so the cheesecloth bag is going to actually catch any sediment which comes through. Oh, that's all good and proper. I haven't, no, I don't know any other difference. So I'm going to try this and just see what happens. Okay, tilting the barrel. I do this for both of those containers, by the way. So now I have nothing but sediment left at the bottom of those two barrels. Okay, stir it up, get it all liquid again. And my intentions here is to simply put that liquid into the other barrel and then take it out and put it into the top of that cheesecloth bag and squeeze out the remaining liquid. I don't want to waste anything. There's a considerable amount of fluid left there and I want to get that into the uh, pot still as well. Okay, as I said, here we go. We're going to put it through the cheesecloth bag. Make sure that cheesecloth bag is very clear of the bottom of that barrel so I can pour this in. Okay, very easy. How's it going to work? Let's just have a look, shall we? We'll start pouring it in. We've got a reasonable amount in there. I'll squeeze it out and Bob's your uncle. I've recovered the liquid. I very quickly realised that it was that thick it did not pour through that bag very quickly. So then I, I tied it off and then started squeezing like crazy to the point of where I was worrying about the bag rupturing. That obviously wasn't working. Has to be another way. Well, brute force fails. Let's just see if gravity is going to do the job for me. Okay, plan two. Suspend the bag uh, again, leaving plenty of space underneath the bottom of the bag and the barrel. And just pour the whole lot of the, uh, the uh, sediment in and let gravity do the work. All right, so... Plan B might work. Let's just see what happens. Um, the trick is now make sure it's all in there and then just leave it overnight and it should be hopefully uh, completely drained by the morning. I'm about to show you a video of the goop which is in there. It's not pretty by any way, means or shape, but um, it's what's to be expected. It's liquefied cornflakes which have been through a yeast and sugar process. <laughs> Big gooey, but the next morning it looks like this. It worked. I've recovered all the liquid from the remaining cornflake sediment. And as you can see here in the bottom of the barrel, it's quite a considerable amount. You know, it's uh, something very worthwhile doing because uh, I can now go through and siphon out the material and get it all ready for the next stage. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I've got all my material together, uh, siphoning it all out. I'm going to check before the next stage to see whether I've got all the sugar and the starch out. This is a test for the sugar using a specific gravity. I'm going to check it and it drops down quite good. It drops down to around about 95. And uh, the next test is for sugar. So we know, sorry, let me get this right. The, the sugar has gone, that's gone down to 95. Now the next test is for starch. Very simple to do. Uh, put a little bit of the fluid on a spoon drop some iodine in it and uh, if it goes black there's still starch if it goes yellow the, all the starch has been removed so I'm going to just quickly show you my process here with the camera so you can see what happens I'm pleased so far all the sugar's gone now let's just see if all the starch is gone and I've got nothing but clear distillate a uh, clear liquid to go in through the distillation process and here we go it's yellow all the starch is gone all the sugar is gone, yay. Very clear now, very easy. We're gonna get on to the next stage of the process. And the next stage is to simply further clear it up. Now, normally you would wait one or two weeks extra and gravity will do the work for you. Then you can sort of siphon off 
the clear from the remaining sediment. But I'm going to speed things up here. I'm using Turbo Clear. It's a still uh, spirits product. And it helps to do this far, uh, faster. You, you mix part A, an hour or so later on, you put part B in, and um, the next day it's very clear. So I, I've, been, I've taken too much time on this video so far, so I want to make sure I try and speed things up wherever possible. But the end result of going through mixing part A and part B and then siphoning it all off, uh, I'm going to skip a lot of the process in a second. I'll show you exactly what we've got. Pretty well close to 40 litres of very clear material ready for the distillation process. Now, I normally use a reflux column, but for the sake of this cornflakes mash, I'm going to use my little pot still because it retains a lot of the flavour. You cook it at a certain temperature. That's a completely different story to how you do that. But 65% alcohol by volume, got about five litres of it. And that's a stripping run, complete with tails, heads and everything. Now, when I run it through again, I end up with this material here and I'm just testing to see how strong, I've already taken the tails and the heads out, I'm just testing to see what the alcohol uh, by vol alcohol level is and it looks right now around about 75 to 78 uh, percent alcohol by volume. That's good, so now I can work out and calculate how much water to put in to distill or to separate it back down to 40% uh, alcohol by volume. I've got a separate video which shows you how to do this, but it's dead simple. It's a mathematical formula, and um, then you add the water, and, and you've got it down to 40% alcohol by volume. The only thing left to do now is to uh, finish it uh, finish it up, uh, carbon filter it through activated carbon, and uh, then it's ready to pour the final stage, which is going to be, um, going to be um, obviously, putting flavour in. Just checking the final alcohol by volume level here. And it seems to be right. Very happy with the content. There we go. We've got just over three and a half litres of final product. So now we've got to put through that filter, as I said. And as soon as we put it through that filter, I can then get into the final stage. <laughs> that, of course, is going to mean we can get into the stage where we're going to have a little bit of a taste test. Looking forward to that. Well, it's been an exciting journey, but uh, we're here. We're here at the end of the road, and this is the taste test. <laughs> As you can see in front of me, this is the grand total of the whole exercise. I've got uh, one, two, three, four full bottles and three quarters of a bottle. It's about three and a half litres. Now, I was happy uh, with that uh, quantity. I made the cuts on the tails uh, early to make sure I did it to my expectations. You might want to make yours later for a different taste. It's up to you. But I personally was happy making that cut then. Now, as you can see, I've got uh, one bottle which is completely clear. And now I actually put some wood chips in that around about five days ago. This is uh, Steel Spirits Kentucky Bourbon Chips from Bourbon Barrels. And uh, these ones here, I put wood chips in just yesterday. So I'm gonna give them another four or five days before uh, I filter those in a coffee filter. Now, um, the quantities I use for this, as you can see, it's reasonably light. But that's fine, it smells great. And I haven't tasted it yet. That's what's gonna be happening in this video here. If I followed the instructions on here, it said to put 50 grams per two liters of spirits. And I put it down proportionately to a 700 ml bottle. If I did that, it would have been too strong by my expectations. This, the wood smell would have been too strong. So I cut the, the recipe in half to use. And uh, that's given me this product. It smells great. As I said, I haven't, I haven't drank it yet. I'm going to do that <laughs> right now. And I'd like to invite you to come along for the journey. Um, I have my scotch just with a little bit of ice. And that's about it. So here we go. Cornflakes whiskey. Am I going to still be standing after my first sip? Or am I going to want to put it down? Or am I going to want to keep it? <laughs> first taste, eh? Cheers. It's very pleasant. It's mild, but it's still got that spirit bite. It's got a good wood oak flavor or a wood barrel flavor. And it's got a very pleasant taste. It really has.
nice enough to have on its own. I wouldn't... The, the flavour of this is good. I wouldn't put this with a mixer um, because I think you'd be spoiling the flavour. But at the end of the day, is this worthwhile doing? It was a long journey and uh, rather messy and complicated. But at the end of the day, I'd say yes, it's an interesting flavour. In comparison to the corn whiskey that I made, um, it's a different taste. But I want to try and make the corn whiskey again using 100% corn. This is proper grade corn, uh, food grade corn instead of animal grade corn. And I'll try the comparison again. But uh, I think at the end of the day, would I try it again? Cheers. I'll leave that one up to you. Well, it's been a fun journey. If you've enjoyed my journey, remember I've been learning as I went here. I'm no expert. I'm still finding out things as I go. If you've enjoyed your, my journey and uh, you'd like to see more, please subscribe, like and share. And if you have a comment as to what uh, I am doing or how I might improve it, please do comment and share your words uh, with everybody else who reads the comments. And uh, I do read all of the, the comments that are there. If I find some information which is helpful, what I'll do is I'll, I'll include it into my recipes from here on in. So thanks for joining me on my Cornflakes Whiskey journey. Cheers.